Joe here, I'm a musician, I'm a composer, and I like talking about music right here on this channel for your eyeballs to consume. Architecture, art, and music have all had a very close intertwined relationship throughout history, and that is exactly what we will be talking about today. I can't say we will. We will, we will, we will, we will. And that is exactly what we will be talking about today. Please like, please leave a comment, and please just click subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Let's go. Since a lot of ancient music was never written down, it can be quite hard to unpick the relationship ancient cultures had between music and architecture. However, there is some surviving information. Music in ancient Greece was often performed in amphitheatres. Now, amphitheatres were designed to be as echoey as possible while remaining open air. And this was ideal, as the structure of the building itself would amplify voices and instruments to even the furthest audience member. Very, very little is known about music in ancient Egypt, but we can guess that the performances would have taken place among the great structures that the ancient Egyptians built. The pyramids were designed to lift pharaohs up to the position of gods, and I imagine the music would have had a similar function. Now, apart from that, really there is just very little written information on ancient music. And today, in the 21st century, archaeologists are working on trying to uncover ancient music's lost secrets with relation to ancient architecture. Moving forward a few thousand years, churches and cathedrals built all across Europe throughout the medieval period were places filled with music. Catholicism, the most popular form of Christianity at the time, dominated the cultural landscape and defined the relationship the public had with music and art in general. Now, it's important to remember that the vast majority of common folk in the medieval period were completely illiterate. Reading was just not a thing that most people needed, given that the majority of humans worked in farms, and it wouldn't be until the 18th or perhaps the 19th or even the 20th centuries when widespread literacy would begin to take hold. So the clergy, with its goal of spreading the good word of God and Jesus Christ and the, I don't know, spaghetti monster, had to find another way to communicate their religion to the masses without the use of the written word. And the major way they did this was through, you guessed it, architecture and music. The Catholic Church did everything big. They constructed towering, ornate, imposing cathedrals with giant, intricate glass windows to communicate the glory of God to the general public without anyone ever having to enter the building. Every single square centimetre of the interiors of these cathedrals were covered in tapestries and frescoes and paintings, all depicting stories from the Bible and the various good deeds of Jesus, the apostles and all the saints, or occasionally depicting more horrific imagery of how your soul will burn in hell for eternity if you have sex before marriage. That's me gone. Essentially, architecture was there to dazzle and terrify you, and medieval church music, in a way, was designed to do the exact same thing. The plain chant, one of the many forms of medieval church music, was a very popular style that permeated cathedrals and churches all across Europe. Written for voice with no regards to tempo or time signature, plain chants meandered on for hours, echoing throughout the halls and chambers in a wash of grand, endless sound whose beginning and end would have been hard to locate. The music was generally set to various boring lyrics in Latin, that's just my opinion, that no commoner of the day would have been able to understand. And this, coupled with the timeless, endless quality of the music, would have really created this feeling of insignificance and tininess in the face of God's grand design. Oh my god, like grand designs. This was the exact same function that the architecture performed, and they really synergized to make people's lives a misery. Sadly, the ultimate goal of this was just to oppress people, to make them feel small, insignificant, and powerless, so as to quash any desire the common serfs might have had to rise up against their feudal lords. It's a common theme in ancient and perhaps modern day art, using buildings and music to instill a sense of powerlessness so that you can steal from people. Nowadays, concert spaces and performance halls are directly designed with sound in mind. The Philharmonie de Paris, I don't know if I pronounced that right, one of the major concert halls in Paris, is constructed in an amphitheatre style, with the orchestra in the centre, deep at the bottom, with its music emanating and echoing upwards to the audience above. Everything inside and out is sleek and smooth, not only to fit with the contemporary style, but also to facilitate the easy propagation of sound waves. The vastness of the space makes the building almost feel like its own cathedral, luckily without the fear of eternal damnation. 
funnily enough, the relationship architecture and music have goes beyond just a shared history. In fact, a lot of the terms used to describe music, things like rhythm and harmony, are also used in architecture. Rhythm in music describes the way time is divided up through the use of repetition. Rhythm in architecture describes the repetition of particular elements on a building's facade. Things like balconies, windows, shapes, basically anything. Musical texture refers to how various lines and voices interact with one another to create layers of sound. Texture in architecture refers to the physical qualities of materials and how their boundaries interact, so rough to smooth, jagged or refined, simple or ornate. And harmony in music refers to how pitches relate to one another to create movement and dynamism. Harmony in architecture refers to how all the elements of a building's composition work together to create balance. I think it's more than a coincidence that these terms overlap between the disciplines. This is mostly my own opinion as a composer, but I believe that music and architecture both appeal to a similar part of the human experience. For me at least, I, I think they light up the same part of my brain. There have been times when I've stood in or outside of a particular building that I like, and I felt a similar way to how I feel when I listen to music. Just this sense of bliss and, and like wonder. Recently, I was walking through the Barbican Centre, a, a massive, this massive behemoth of a brutalist residential estate near my uni halls, and I remember looking up to the sky through a gap in the concrete in this giant ziggurat of a building, and I remember just feeling so, like, small. Not in a powerless way, but in this way that was almost spiritual. In that moment, I could feel just how big the universe was, and just how tiny I was in comparison. I felt my ego, my sense of, like, self, like, dissolving, and it was incredibly humbling. Music does this to me too. I know it sounds silly that anything bar ayahuasca can make you feel that way, but it did, and I think that's very powerful. Overall, music and architecture have had a very long, sisterly relationship throughout the ages, constantly inspiring and influencing one another, and the people and artists that live within and among them. Thank you so much for watching. Next video should be out uh, around about next week, hopefully. I'm aiming for shorter videos, but uploaded slightly more often. And I don't know how effectively I'm executing that plan, but I'm trying. Please like, comment, and uh, subscribe. I don't know when this video will be out, but I'm aiming for a thousand subscribers. So if I have reached that, crack out the champagne. If I haven't, click the button. And even if I have reached that, click the button. See you later.